Fandino and Ugolino Vivaldi were brothers, Genoese merchants, and explorers who, more than two centuries before the historic first voyage of Christopher Columbus, would set sail for the Indies. They departed west from the Mediterranean into the Atlantic, where their exploits thereafter would become the subject of legend, conjecture, and historical debate for centuries. This is their story. Vendino and Ugolino Vivaldi were connected with the first expedition in search of an ocean way from Europe to India via the Cape Route. This was a shipping route that ran from the European coast in the Atlantic Ocean, rounded the Cape of Good Hope at the southern edge of Africa, before reaching Asia's coast in the Indian Ocean. The brothers led the expedition which they had organized in conjunction with Tadisio Doria of the House of Doria, a wealthy and historically influential Genoese family. The expedition was comprised of two galleys, purportedly named the Sanctus Antonius and Allegranzia, which departed from the city of Genoa in May 1291. Its aim was believed to have been primarily financial, to forge a route to the continent of India, quote, by the ocean sea, and to return with tradable goods. Aside from trade, the expedition is also believed to have gone forward with the intention of spreading the Christian faith specifically Roman Catholicism, as in this point in history the Roman Catholic Church still maintained a religious hegemony over most of Europe. Two Franciscan friars, members of a mendicant religious order within the Catholic Church, accompanied the voyage for this purpose. With their departure, the expedition became one of the first recorded voyages to sail out from the Mediterranean Sea and into the Atlantic Ocean since the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD. It's further supposed that, if their intention was to chart a course from Europe to India via the Atlantic, and if it had indeed been successful, they would have accomplished the first circumnavigation of Africa since the Phoenician expedition sent out by the Egyptian pharaoh Necho II some 600 years before Christ. The latter was the first recorded occurrence of any civilization accomplishing such a feat. The Vivaldi success in this endeavor would have made it the first completed circuiting of the African continent in over 1,880 to 1,900 years. To put that into perspective, that's little over a century shy of the amount of time between the estimated birth year of Christ and the present day. The galleys made a brief stop on the Mediterranean island of Majorca, off the southern coast of Spain, before continuing to sail east through the Strait of Ceuta, the Strait of Gibraltar, and out into the Atlantic Ocean. As the galleys sailed down the coast of Morocco, they were well equipped and well armed, and for good reason. At this time, Morocco was under the control of the Marinid Sultanate. The Sultanate was actively involved in the power struggle between Muslims and Christians to gain control over the neighboring region of Iberia and the lucrative trade of its peninsula. The expedition is known to have traveled along the coast of Morocco to a place called Gozora, modern day Cape Shinar. It should be noted that at least by the time of the 15th century, the Cape was considered by both European and Arab explorers to be virtually unconquerable. This is potentially due to the geographic difficulties of accessing such a location. Seaborne explorers would find themselves under the shadow of the towering coastal cliffs of the region. Its arid and relatively isolated nature likewise made it a difficult place to reach from land. Moreover, Europeans attempting to gain access inland from the waters of the Cape would have to travel using the mouth of the Asivan Draw, or Draw River. This would be no easy feat either, given that one would still have to traverse the rocky shoals that ring the coast. Further travel inland along the river would have also increased the chances of attack as not only would Christian Europeans be in Muslim territory, they'd also risk running into the civil unrest that dominated the surrounding Jua Valley. The Beni Hassan, a group of Magil Arabs who had invaded the valley in 1255, had become a deeply disruptive force in the area till just five years before the expedition, Abu Yaqub Yasuf in Nasser, the contemporary leader of the Marinid Sultanate, had put down a revolt in the region, though rebellious sentiments and upheaval would never fully depart from the area making it a hotbed of danger for locals and travelers alike. As such, the Cape represented the furthest extent of European navigation, and would remain so for centuries thereafter, hence the reason for one of its many names, Cabo de Neo, Portuguese for Cape No. After reaching Cape Chanar, all news about the expedition ceased, and no further contact was received from Vendino or Ugolino. For all intents and purposes, the two brothers, their ships, and their crew simply vanished off the face of the earth or rather, off the surface of the Atlantic. It isn't hard to assume that their disappearances would have fueled European speculations of devilish monsters and other strange and dangerous phenomena lurking further south of Cape Chenar, the non plus ultra of early Atlantic exploration. As Alvide Carmasto, a later Venetian explorer and one of the first discoverers of the Cape Verde Islands once said, 
Kimo Prasa Tandara Oneo. Whoever passes it will make it or not. The Vivaldi brothers may have seen the Canary Islands. The name of one of the smallest of the Canaries and the closest one to Europe, that of Alegranza, shares a name similar to that of one of the expedition ships, the Alegranzia. However, the main derivation of the island's name in the main stream is believed to have come from the mouth of Jean de Bethencourt, a famous French explorer and the first European king of the Canary Islands. Sometime in 1402, he named the island Alegranza, derived from the Spanish word Alegria, meaning joy, having felt joy himself after his conquering expedition to the Canaries finally spotted land. The French historian Jean Gimpel proposed that the two Franciscan friars who accompanied the Vivaldi brothers may have read the Opus Maeus. Written by their fellow Franciscan Roger Bacon, the Opus Maeus was sent to Pope Clement IV in 1267, two decades before the expedition, to explain the work Bacon had undertaken in the realms of science, mathematics, physics, and philosophy. In the 878-page treatise, Bacon asserted that the distance between Spain and India was not great. This theory was later repeated by Pierre d'Ailly, a later French theologian and astrologer, and was eventually put to the test in the famous first expedition of Christopher Columbus. The principal documentation for the expedition and its aftermath can be found in the Genoese annals of Jacopo Doria, a member of the Doria family, whose nephew, Tedisio Doria, had helped to finance the Vivaldi expedition. The documentation was presented to the city of Genoa in 1294. Under the entry of the year 1291, Doria writes the following. Tedisio Doria, Ugolino Vivaldi, and a brother of the latter, together with a few other citizens of Genoa, initiated an expedition which no one up to that time had ever attempted. They fitted out two galleys in splendid fashion. Having stocked them with provision, water, and other necessities, they sent them on their way, in the month of May, toward the Strait of Cuta, the Strait of Gibraltar, in order that the galleys might sail through the ocean sea to India and return with useful merchandise. The two above-mentioned brothers went on the vessels in person, and also two Franciscan friars, all of which truly astonished those who witnessed them as well as those who heard of them. After the travelers passed a place called Gozora, there was no further news of them. May God watch over them and bring them back safely. Additional documentation identifies the other brother as Vandino. It is further noted that Tedisio Doria did not embark on the voyage, and the expedition supplies were meant to last for ten years. This last part is disputed by scholars and historians such as Francis M. Rogers, who, in his work, The Vivaldi Expedition, published 1955, states that their ten-year provision is, quote, an absurd notion, as Vasco da Gama was away from Lisbon for only a little more than two years. Vasco da Gama was a Portuguese explorer most well known for being the first recorded European to reach India successfully in 1498, almost six years after Columbus's discovery of the Americas, and precisely 207 years to the month since the Vivaldi expedition had set out from Genoa. The accomplishments of Columbus or da Gama, however, are theorized to have been the potential objectives of Ugolino and Vendino's voyage. According to Rogers, quote, two immediate problems are at once posed. The first concerns the identification of Gazora. Its solution involves the second, the direction the Vivaldi brothers took after leaving Cuta on the left, nosing through the strait, leaving Seville well on the right, and inevitably taking advantage of the winds which took Columbus to the Canaries and da Gama past them. Did they head west on a pre-Columbian adventure? Did they head down the West African coast in anticipation of the Portuguese? The exact answer to these questions is not known, but the posed potential of either one ending in a successful venture would mean that major points of history are suddenly thrown into contention, namely, who truly reached where first. It is believed that Lanceletto Malocello, another Genoese navigator, departed from Genoa in 1312 to search for the missing Vivaldi brothers, scanning for them in the Canary Islands some two decades after anything had been heard of them last. Though the brothers had possibly made a brief stop at the islands, it is unknown whether Malocello actually found any trace of them. It is doubtful since he ended up remaining for two more decades on the island that would come to be named after him, Lanzarote, only leaving after being expelled by revolt from the native Guanche inhabitants. Notably, Lanzarote is just a short distance to the south of the aforementioned smaller island of Alleganza. Early in the 14th century, Sor Leon de Vivaldo, the son of Ugolino, undertook a series of far-reaching expeditions. He traveled in search of possible traces of his father and uncle. He is said to have reached as far as the city of Mogadishu on the Somali coast, which was then a vassal state of the reigning Azurhan Sultanate. 
However, Sir Leon was prevented by the King of Mogadishu from going to Aksum, the capital of the ancient Aksumite kingdom in modern-day Ethiopia, as the road to the fallen kingdom was no longer secure. The reason for Sir Leon's attempt to reach Ethiopia most likely would have been the same as the overall reason for his travels. Galvano Fiamo was a 14th century Italian Dominican who, after recent discoveries of his work in 2021, is believed to have been the first European in the Mediterranean region to have described the New World. In his book, Chronica Universalis, Galvano claims the Vivaldi expedition reached as far as the lands of Ethiopia. From there, the survivors gave up all attempts to return home. Around 1800, the letter of a famous Genoese seaman, Antonio Tosto de Mare, was discovered in a manuscript by Giacomo Jacob Graberg, a Swedish merchant and resident of Genoa. Graberg had found it in the city's old archives as part of one of three documents assembled by a 15th century Genoese cartographer, possibly Bartolome Pareto as elements to guide the construction of a new map of discovered ports. It was first published in 1802 in Grabberg's journal. The letter, originally written in barely legible Latin, was addressed to Uzodemata's creditors back in Genoa. He had notably fled from them in the hopes of paying off his debts by joining in the lucrative trade between the Portuguese and the West African coast. Dated December 12, 1455, he claims that after sailing with Elvise Caramasto in the service of Prince Henry the Navigator, he met with the last descendant of the survivors of the Vivaldi expedition. This encounter was said to have occurred near the mouth of the river Gambia. Uso de Mare was told that the expedition's two galleys had sailed to the Sea of Guinea, the present-day Gulf of Guinea, and the northeastern was part of the tropical Atlantic Ocean. In that sea, one of the galleys was said to have been stranded. However, the other passed on to a location on the coast of Ethiopia, an ancient Hellenistic term for the upper Nile region of Sudan, as well as certain areas south of the Sahara. The last galley was said to have arrived in Mina or Meniwan, near the Gihon River. Gihon is the name of the biblical Gihon River that stems from the Garden of Eden and flows through Ethiopia. In this case, it most likely refers to the Senegal River. It is said that here the members of the expedition were captured and held in captivity. Though the year given for the Vivaldi expedition is incorrect, here is part of an additional documentation given by Usud Namare on its fate. Quote, in the year of 1285, two galleys sailed from the city of Genoa, commanded by the brothers Ugolino and Guido Vendino, Vivaldi, with the purpose of going on the east to parts of India. These galleys sailed a lot, but when they entered the Sea of Guinea, one of the galleys broke his helmet and could not continue sailing further. The other, however, continued through the sea until he came to a city in Ethiopia called Minan. They were captured and detained by the inhabitants of this city who are Christians of Ethiopia, subjects of Prester John. The city is located by the sea, near the Gion River. They were so closely detained that none of them managed to return home. It should be noted that Alvise Caramasto, who would have been with us at the Mare, mentions no such meeting with the descendant of the expedition in his own memoirs. Moreover, Prester John is a legendary figure of medieval Christian perceptions and the stories of the Orient, and it is unlikely that he specifically was ever a real historical figure. An allusion to the Vivaldi galleys is given in the Libro del Conocimiento, a semi-fictional travelogue written by an unknown Spanish friar, 1350-1385. There are two passages relating to the Vivaldi brothers. In the first, the narrator, traveling what is described as the Guinea region, sub-Saharan Africa, reaches the city of Graciona, the capital of the Black African Empire of Abdesalib, which is allied to Prester John. Quote, they told me in the city of Graciona that the Genoese who escaped the galley that was wrecked at Amenuan were brought here, but it was never known what became of the other galley which escaped. When the friar traveled to the neighboring city of Magdasur, he came across a Genoese man named Sir Leon, quote, searching for his father who had left in two galleys, as I have already explained, and they gave him every honor. But when this Sir Leon wanted to traverse to the empire of Graciona to search for his father, the emperor of Magdasur did not allow it because the way was doubtful and the path was dangerous. As it turns out, Solion is the real name of Ugolino's son, as mentioned before. The locations of these kingdoms are, however, in dispute. The references to Prester John and Magdasor, possibly Mogadishu and Somalia, may have led some to assume that the other galley circumnavigated Africa, or was intercepted around the Horn of Africa. However, the narrator's geographical references suggest that Abdel Salib and Magdasor were in non-Muslim sub-Saharan West Africa, the localization of Amenuan, the place where the first galley capsized, hints at the Senegambia region. If the story is true, it would be feasible to propose that the Vivaldis got as far as Senegal, and that their adventures ended there.
that Vivaldi's voyage may have inspired part of Dante's Divine Comedy, an Italian narrative poem that is said to have encapsulated the Western Church's medieval view of the afterlife in the 14th century. Canto 26 of the Inferno is about the character Ulysses' last voyage, which ultimately ends in failure in the Southern Hemisphere. This is thought to be in reference to the lost expedition. According to Henry F. Carey, Ulysses' fate was inspired, quote, partly from the fate which there was reason to suppose had befallen some adventurous explorers of the Atlantic Ocean.